From Aspect Digital, it is now my great pleasure to welcome Greg Bassett's Daniel McDonald. So tell me about the immersive display suite, Charter Hall. What, are, what is it? Look, the immersive display suite, in particular with the Charter Hall project, as discussed, is, is an, a 3D model of a project going on in, in George Street in Sydney, 333 George Street. Um, it's designed to take people through and give them a full actual visual representation of what the completed project will look like and the different variations of the completed floor. So for that project we did four, four different floor plan types and they're able to take potential lessees or buyers of the property in there and get an actual completed visual representation including the view outside um, of what the finished product's going to look like. Okay, so what, let me say I'm walking in. Can you tell me what the experience is like? Give me a feeling of what it's like. It's an interactive 3D gaming model in virtual reality. Um, so you can either actually use an Oculus Rift and be fully immersed in the environment, so you actually feel like you're actually in there. Um, Charter Hall are actually using it in uh, a two-dimensional format, um, mainly because of some of the challenges with the Oculus Rift and a commercial rollout. But uh, you can go in there and then once you're inside the environment, you can navigate around, look at quiet rooms, look at the different floor plans, the furniture, go to any window in the building and enjoy the view. And then you can actually go through different floor plan layouts and options and furniture options while you're inside the environment and choose the one you like. Okay, so why, why is this any good? I mean, surely just, you know, a bit of a model. We're surrounded by a few models in this room itself. Isn't that enough? Surely that's enough. Well, one thing that people really struggle to do, and usually when you're buying commercial property or leasing commercial property, you're looking at a flat floor plan that's been, that's been done, and you usually have some kind of textured storyboard and some furniture pictures and things, and that's what you're left with. But for some people, it's very hard to get an appreciation of the space. Um, the one thing we can do with virtual reality nowadays is actually take people inside the environment so they can actually get a really true appreciation for, for how big the space is and how their, their team and their employees are going to work and interact in that space. And that's something that you can only do in a virtual environment. Okay, so how, how did you therefore work and interact with the client? Can I get a, a bit of a sense of that? What, what's different about this process and perhaps other, other, other projects that you've done? Well, traditionally we start, uh, when I started with ASFIT, we traditionally went down the, the road of animation uh, and still renders, of course. Um, as hardware advanced through the years, uh, we can now rely on clients having the correct hardware to support uh, a venture like virtual reality. Um, so for us to be able to take the client off the linear path from an animation is a big advantage for them, especially if they need to yeah, obviously turn the camera around. We can't do that in an anim uh, traditional animation. So uh, having that ability for them to do that is a big selling point uh, for us especially. So. And of course with the Oculus it's a bit more immersive for the client. If, if we don't know what an Oculus is, if we're not sure, can you explain what that is? It's a headset, obviously, first and foremost, um, which it's still in production, development phase. Um, they're expecting January, February, hopefully, don't quote me on that, but uh, for the actual uh, product release for them. Um, with, with our role where we are at the moment, uh, the, the troubles that we're having at the moment, uh, mainly frame rate, uh, can make people a little bit seasick, you do motion sickness in there. Do, do you get seasick in it? A little bit when I first tried it on. Right. Um, I'm pretty good with it now, so it does take a little bit of time to get there, but um, we're, with our development of that, uh, with the VR stuff, we need to be able to bring that frame rate up high enough so you don't get that motion sickness. So that's, uh, it's been a major challenge with virtual reality. Well, that's been one of the challenges of us commercialising the platform. Right. Um, when we first you don't really want people being sick, do you, right. while they're experiencing no, it? No, that's right. It's it kind of messes good. up yeah, the whole experience. Bad. Yeah, yeah. So we've had to do some interesting things around the Oculus Rift. The first time we developed the prototype, we went out there and started introducing it to people, and we actually had people going blue and feeling nauseous. So it was a really bad experience good for them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that didn't work, so we had to go back to the drawing board. Yep. And the way we've been able to resolve that is actually being able to um, instead of having people move inside the environment, because what happens is when you're moving around freely inside the environment with the Oculus Rift, your body can't quite work out what's going on mm. and that's where those feelings of nauseous come from because it appreciates the fact that you're actually moving around inside the environment but physically you're stationary. Okay, so what have you done differently to make that better? So we, were, we actually introduced a teleport option. So you can't actually physically move around inside the environment but you can look at a location within the environment and teleport over there and then look, look around and, and uh, enjoy the space. And turn your head while you teleport there. Oh. So you, you do, you, uh, lim uh, it's limited the control of turning and turning your head at the same time. It's like a double turn. So a lot of people can't comprehend the brain. It's going a bit too fast for it. So, mm. 
So we came up with that. Yeah. Okay, so so this, I mean, this is about a commercial property development. So is this is this completely un, unusual or unheard of in this particular field? I wouldn't say unheard of. Um, I think it's being utilised a lot more now. Um, as I mentioned, the hardware. I think yeah. that's that's been a big key factor in a lot of um, commercialisation of it. Um, but I think what we're doing. We're trying to be the forefront and, and trying to advance as, as fast as we can to be ahead of the game, obviously, as a, from a marketing point of view, of course. But um, there's amazing opportunities here, isn't it? There, is, in terms yeah, of the yeah, commercialisation exactly, of this yeah. product, it's yeah. extraordinary. To us, it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're very excited about it. So, mm. so we, we we kind of saw what we were doing as disrupting the way um, residential and commercial property is being sold now. Quite often, on a site, they'll build a display centre, and um, they'll. They'll, they'll do half a wall and, and they'll do sort of a semi layout and they'll, they'll use that to kind of try and sell people the dream inside the property. So what we've tried to do is completely disrupt that process and we're encouraging our clients to build an interactive display centre uh, at a good location where they have the opportunity to sell multiple properties in the one location using our VR technology. Mm. If you had everything working, all the technology was tip top as they say, what could you potentially do that you can't quite do now? You're almost grasping at it. Well, the we next and now, the next and now. Imagination, I suppose, is yeah. the answer to that. Um, <laughs> but there's not too much that we're limited with. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's very difficult to smell what the environment's going to yeah. smell like and touch and feel. But, you know, with some of the technology coming out with the Oculus Rift, we're, we're going to be able to resolve that to actually be able to interact with elements within the VR environment. I guess that's probably the next thing on our roadmap. Mm. Um, with, your, with your hands. And with, yeah, with your hands and, and actually interact with the environment. Um, we're currently working on a project where we're using a full 3D, 360 cinematic experience. We're able to take 12 people inside a VR environment. So that's kind of the step beyond the Oculus Rift. So that's a very exciting initiative we're working on at the moment. But I guess, you know, the next thing for us is, is somehow overcoming that nauseous factor. Interesting, and interesting to know that with the Charter Hall project, they haven't gone with the Oculus Rift because of, um, they want to actually have the, have the ability to move around inside the environment. So they're only going with a 2D model. Mm. But uh, I guess going forward, it, it's about of moving away from the Oculus Rift and giving a lot of people that kind of 360 VR experience in, a, in, a, in an environment together. Who are the clients who adopt this technology? Are they edgy? Are they risky? Who are they? I think they're willing to invest in the future technology with what they, uh, their outcome or they're, they're trying to sell the sales point. Uh, and getting us on board, I mean, we go, we go into the meeting and, you know, we would get ideas from them as much as we give them ideas. So, so those outcomes are great for us as well, as, as well as the clients. So, uh, and, of course, word of mouth is once you build a, a really good product, it gets around quite easily, yeah. But, I mean, the advantages for them are pretty clear, do you think, that uh, in, in comparison to others in the marketplace who are just putting up a bit, a bit of a placard and some info underneath it, yeah. this, this is a pretty advantageous possibility. Yeah, well, it, there's some... Uh, there is some walls in the way, uh, as you can imagine, a salesperson at a, a display centre, you might get general public coming in and just wasting time for them, unfortunately they can't make the sale, it's more for us, it's, I think it's more of a next level tier for a salesperson, once you have them on board off the floor plans, you can then take them into the apartment and which apartment they would like to purchase, I think it's more of a tool for them to sort of springboard their client on and, and invest in that house or yeah. property. Yeah. Could you be doing the rental market, do you think? Uh, well, actually, the, 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 the Charter Hall project is actually for rental. So right. those, those um, people who we've made that product for will actually be leasing the space, and that's why there's different floor plan layouts. It's, it's how they're going to actually set up their workplace. This is very interesting. This is great. It's, so, it's quite a low-cost thing to do, really. Yeah. Once we've modelled up the floor plan and then to actually change all the different options, it's actually quite a low-cost thing for okay, us to do. So it, it makes sense financially to do it. As opposed oh, absolutely. to setting up and doing the other so traditional models, it's much cheaper in the end. Exactly. I think in terms... I mean, it, it's... VR, we started off doing animations and visualisations, but VR has now become our core business. Um, I guess the main factor is there is so much greater functionality that we can do inside those environments. We, we've done, we've actually modelled up the entire local government authority for the city of Ipswich and there they're actually doing things around strategic planning, working out uh, shade analysis, a line of sight issues, those sort of things you can do inside a real-time environment that you can't do in any other type of format. So we've been speaking about VR but there's also obviously AR, augmented reality. Can you tell me a bit about those two and do you see them coming into your business? Uh, augmented reality, I'd love for us to utilise that. Um, I think 
hardware is limiting us at the moment, um, but I, I definitely see the two uh, converging at some point, yes. Thank you very much. Great to hear about it. Thank Good you on you guys. Great. Appreciate Thank it. You.